Hey, I'm Marla with Raising Cane, and I've got some very cute thrift flips. Let's get it started with hiding a broken bunny ear. You might remember that I only paid 99 cents for this very cute little ceramic bunny, but as you can see, someone had to glue his ear back on. He must have lived in a household like mine with lots of action. So I had gone to Hobby Lobby and picked out a few stems of pretty florals and found this lovely autumn, you know, it's the perfect August color because it's gold and sunflowery colored. And I just took, this is wire, you know, wire stemmed, what am I trying to say? Wire stemmed florals. And I just overlapped and hooked them together and twisted them together until I made a precious little halo of flowers. But I did take my hot glue gun um, because I figured my grandbabies would be touching it and secured it into place and then added some sunflowers from the scrapbooking aisle. Those little sunflowers are in a package that uh, you could make three-dimensional scrapbook pages, I guess. But I have found that I love the tiny flowers in the scrapbooking aisle and they happen to be 50% off, so that was a good thing. And um, I feel like I made a little bohemian bunny out of my bunny. <laughs> Flower child, maybe that's more like it. But it's so cute and a good way to hide an imperfection <laughs> and make something cute. Photobomb animals. My sister Lana, a while back, <laughs> look at these photobomb pictures of animals. She found the cutest idea where you pick out some photobomb animals. Well, I guess the original people found the canvases, which I gave $2 a piece, if you can believe that, for those oil painted canvases. And then I printed out the right sized uh, um, little animals. I picked a rabbit and a fox and I used a glue stick because if you decoupage with Mod Podge it might wrinkle up. I did print it out onto cardstock so that it would be a little thicker and I had Claire help me roll it down and she was so proud to be in my video. She kept checking to see if she was truly in the frame. Okay to make this look more believable I took my little acrylic paints from my paint by number sets that I have finished that's a bucket full because I love to do paint by number and I just painted on top of the printout to make it look I faked it I totally faked it to make it look like it had been painted on there originally with the photo now if if you don't want this on here forever you can peel that off and I don't I don't think it would really show much much trace of having been there but I sure am enjoying these in the cute little barnwood frames that I, those are thrifted as well the bunny really looks more believable than the fox I think but I'm just so charmed by that bunny it's in my foyer and I'm loving them floral wreath I decided to do a wreath for my mother-in-law I found this um, really pretty it had good bones but um, most of the flowers on it were very faded it must have been in a spot that had a lot of natural sunlight bright sunlight so I paid half of $7.99 at a thrift store and took out the most faded and the purple leaves and things that wouldn't wouldn't do as well for this season and then I added in my own florals that came from you know Dollar Tree Walmart my own stash I just kept adding things now, knowing that I was doing this for my mother in love Sue, she loves red and she loves bright colors. So I had found these mums from Dollar Tree and I thought they looked really good. So I was able, I hardly had to glue anything. I don't think I did glue anything on this wreath because those twigs were really tightly woven and I was able to stick the stems down in there. Oh, I think I did put some hot glue on the little fern things because they didn't actually have a wire that I could use to stick down. Now, I just hung it up in my foyer to get a picture of it, to get a little close-up of it, because I was so tickled with how it turned out. <laughs> it just made me smile, and it was so fun. I took it and I put it on her front door, and she had no idea. And so when she, um, when we were going out the front door, she looked at, this is her house, she looked at it, she said, Oh, where did that come from? I said, well, I 
did it for you. All right, vintage cake cover. The aluminum cake covers, I think, are beautiful, but I have, and aren't these got gorgeous? These look like, hmm, Mackenzie Childs kind of thing. I didn't think that I would take the time or have enough artistic talent to actually be able to hand paint that on there. So I thought, hmm, what could I do that would be just as fun, but um, a lot more fun actually for me because that would that'd be too much work. So the Mod Podge of napkins. This is this is me using the paintbrush with water method just to be able to make it weak enough to tear it off. But guess what? I didn't peel it down to the one ply before I did that. I just made that mistake on one napkin. I think it took hmm, two and a half napkins to get this done. Oh, and I tried rubbing it with the saran wrap. I must need more Mod Podge lessons, I, I admit. I have great ideas, but I don't always have the best skill set on everything that I do. But I sure have fun. <laughs> Let's just have fun. Let's don't have to be the best at everything we do. Um, but I really think this is adorable, and I can't wait till some little child has uh, some kind of tea party or a birthday party that I can use this setup. It's just a galvanized plate, which I left the bottom rim, the aluminum. I left that showing, and then I have it up on a little pedestal. And I did leave the wood the natural color. Now you're going to need to spray that with a sealer. Vintage Wood Goose. I had done one a while back that I have loved using in my kitchen. Boy, it's getting a little junky up there. Um, but then uh, over the past several months, I have found a couple more that the only thing I did to it was I took my little uh, mouse sander to it. And because it, I did it at night, <laughs> and I did it on my back steps and my dogs were all around me I just was in one of those moods where I was like you know what I'm not going to film this step everybody knows how to use a sander probably if you don't there's other tutorials from other YouTubers that can tell you just how to sand but as you can see I just removed a lot of the paint and left some paint on on purpose because I thought that was awfully fun to leave a little bit of the design showing through and that little mallard is sweet and that's in my foyer cute look at the you can see the wood grain coming through the natural streaks and wood grain and still see just enough of the paint to know that that's supposed to be a mallard i really enjoyed doing that and again in my foyer there that's the opposite wall of well it's what you see if you were coming from my bedroom toward the front of the house that's that's the end of my hall and <laughs> i really enjoyed making that a more neutral it had a very country 1980s blue beak and a real cartoon looking eye so i think it it serves my purpose better to make it look um more primitive and very neutral now rug covered bench um, you ever done a project that you almost cried? Well, this one almost got me. But look at the, the, the deal I got on this bench. I paid $15 for that. I happened to be in there after it was marked down, and then on top of that, it was a half price day. And you can see me trying to, I wanted to be able to reuse the upholstery tacks. And I couldn't get them off with a needle nose plier, and I couldn't do it with a hammer. And then a um, steak knife, look, that's what does it. That does it more easily than anything I tried. So I went around and took all the tacks off with a steak knife. And then this rug is from Five Below, and it's just a drop cloth kind of canvas duck rug. And I trimmed it as closely and exactly as I could to where it would hit just on the bottom of that, you know, where the brad nails were. And I decided that the edge of that rug was hemmed and would be perfect for me to use as my little edge trim. But you know, this was a good bit more work than I expected it to be. I like to do things fast, um, unless I'm in the mood to do a paint by number and I don't care if it takes a long time to do that. But that took me for a living ever uh, one evening. And <laughs> I sure do love the way it turned out. The Rat, the little rug was originally pink and white, but it had I washed it so many times that it's kind of faded down to just a neutral 
tan and white. Primitives sign. Now this is the method that I love to do for any kind of hand painted sign. You can see I got an idea from Pinterest of a font that I really liked. So I decided I just didn't want to do it curved. I wanted to do it straight. So I printed it out and I chose it to be a gray color so that I didn't use up too much of my toner. I'm kind of thrifty that way. And I took a, a strip of beadboard, but I turned it so that the beadboard detail was on the back side of this thing. And I did a coat of plaster chalk paint and then I streaked on some elephant chalk paint and then I splotched around with some antique wax. I wanted it to look pretty old and abused and used and all that so I'm streaking it on and pouncing it on. Now the um, tracing paper that you've used for sewing that works in a grand way. It's just lovely. It does perfectly when you put it between your pattern and the wood and press down with a pencil then you can see that I've made the little outline and that font it was really um, rough edged and it was an easy font to paint because you could just kind of blotch it on there to get that detail of being mm, aged and old and chipped off and that's <laughs> That's the, the doorway going into my garage from the kitchen. It probably should have said enter at your own risk, but it says primitives. Now the lampshades that I gave a fresh cover to, these two lamps I found, but I, I thought I would just throw away the shades, but then I couldn't find any shades that I liked as well as those as far as the size and shape and everything. So I just thought, well, I wonder if I could just take some cotton linen fabric. This was actually a sheet that got ripped um, and the rip was so tragic that I just decided that I would use that sheet for other projects and here I go just hot gluing it on me and my hot glue gun but if you cut it just as close and carefully as you can to the exact size uh, look at Ella. I don't know what she was doing. She was trying to lick her nose. It was like she was doing a back bend had to throw that in there um, and then I, I just barely left enough excess that I could roll it toward the inside and it worked out perfectly and now you're gonna need to stretch it pretty tight um, if you leave it loose it'll, it'll make the wrinkles show so take your time and pull at it and tack it you know on the each extremity and then pull in between and Take your time making sure that you get enough tape to secure it so that it does show as smoothly in the end as it can. And I just had that sitting on the end of my dining room table because I'm not ready for the spot they're going to live permanently. Or, you know, nothing's permanent in my house, but anyway, it was staged there. Okay, I got this truck um, before the 4th of July at Ross, and I didn't pay very much for it, about 14 I think and it had these patriotic stars in it which I enjoyed using for my 4th of July season but I wanted to be able to use the truck for other seasons as well so I decided the best thing I could do to it would be to put on a just a rather sloppy <laughs> little coat of the plaster chalk paint and I didn't even seal it or anything I mean that this is this is a just relax and just get that paint on there kind of project. This is not fine art, y'all. This is just enjoy doing a craft. And as cute as the navy and red was, I knew that it would not match everything that I would like to use it for for the rest of the year, which is, you know, autumn and Christmas and all that kind of stuff. So I just thought it turned out adorably right there on my buffet. I did leave the uh, gingham large gingham check runner up there it's not actually a runner it's just a piece of fabric folded in just such a way that I just laid it up there and um, I'm enjoying it in my August sunflower season that's what I'm gonna call August August is the sunflower season and it transitions very nicely into fall because sunflower is also a nice fall flower but it goes really well with the blue and white that I already had going 
Now the framed fabric will be something I found a beautiful ornate frame and for the 4th of July season I had a piece of flag in there and then next I tried that but then I decided oh no I need to do sunflowers to go with my sunflower season so I pulled that out and I had bought a little piece of sunflower fabric before I found this very cute little towel tea towel kitchen towel tea towel <laughs> that was on sale for $2.99 at Hobby Lobby. And I decided I liked it much better than the fabric that I had found. So the reason I love it is because it has the eucalyptus in there with the sunflower, which was a great inspiration to me. You can see that I'm just, I cut it out vaguely, the shape of it. I took my hot glue gun. Well, I'm having to scrape off the hot glue from the previous thing. But you know, that's the magic of hot glue. Nothing has to be permanent. I tacked it at the very top. I pulled it tight and tacked it at the bottom. I tacked it, stuck it down left and right, and then I just worked my way around pulling it as tight as I could so that those wrinkles, the folds, came out. And I didn't even have to iron it or do anything else to it after you pull it tight that way. And now I have the sunflower and eucalyptus towel up there in that frame, and I'm just still enjoying my blue willow platters and I did use some stems of eucalyptus with my little sunflowers because that was a great inspiration. I liked that. Well it's happy doggy spotlight time. How fun is this? I'm loving that you're sending me your doggies. Meet TJ who belongs to Cecilia of Pinson, Alabama. A fellow Alabamian. Isn't he cute? That's, um, I think she said he's begging for Cheez-Its at this point and he does get them when he begs because that's just too cute. Send me your pictures and I will feature your doggy in the doggy spotlight. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you and I pray that you would enjoy living your life that God has given you. If things are not perfect, you know what? None of us have things perfect. We just need to be grateful for what we have and enjoy what we can.